Everybody, we're back again, and we've got another great event coming up in October. Of Tim Henderson with me. We're here to talk about the Southern Festival of Books, a yearly event. Unfortunately, last year, like many things, you weren't able to hold the event, but it's back this year in person. That's right. We're really excited that it's back in person. Uh, that's the plan. We are uh, internally, we've been saying for a while that we uh, were planning to wade back into the in person <laughs> event after a year of doing it uh, virtually for the first time ever in its uh, 30, 32 years. So, um, still had a successful event last year, but one of the key things that we knew we were missing and, um, and were sad to miss last year was that in-person in component and really just seeing uh, book lovers and readers and writers together in one space. And so we uh, got to work to look for ways we could do that uh, responsibly and safely given, you know, the public health concerns that are still very much uh, in the air, so to speak. And so we, we wanted to respect all that concern and yet still, uh, as I said, find a way to wade back into getting together that's such an important uh, component of the festival. And so that's the plan. This year we will be doing the first ever hybrid uh, Southern Festival of Books. So we will be in person for two days, the 9th and 10th of October, that's Saturday and Sunday. So no in-person programming scheduled for Friday uh, as we normally are a three-day event. That will be different this year. Uh, again, hopefully these changes will be um, uh, temporary, sort of one, one year only, but we'll, We'll see how, uh, how everything progresses over the coming year. But in-person programming on Saturday and Sunday uh, and some virtual programming uh, in the weeks leading up to the in-person date. So um, really exciting program, uh, but again, something a little bit different to sort of get us toward what we hope will be being fully back on the plaza, uh, the, the festival that everyone has known for three decades uh, and loved back next year. Yeah, you have some great special guests. Tell me about that. I mean, that's pretty incredible after taking a year off. Yeah, had, well, a, had a great lineup. That's right. We had a great lineup last year for the virtual program, but we're really excited at um, the lineup this year. Uh, again, especially with folks who are coming to be in person uh, on the plaza. That's uh, uh, as planned. Some, uh, I think, a good mix of uh, people that we've seen. Uh, repeatedly over the years and they're real festival uh, favorites. Ron Rash will be at the festival this year, Rick Bragg, uh, Wiley Cash. So um, a, lo a lot of faces and authors that, uh, that people know and love and are familiar with will be joining us on the plaza. Um, as well as always the case uh, with the festival, um, uh, a mix of authors and a mix of genres. So we always like to say something for everyone, if you like to read at all, we hope that you'll find something on the program that's of interest to you, and then be introduced uh, to and challenged by something that maybe you hadn't known about or hadn't expected. So this is a part of the programming that we always uh, try to infuse and, um, and are excited about this year as well. Yeah, you mentioned this is a three decade long festival, not many festivals last that long. Yeah. Tell me how it first got started. Well, we first, it, uh, so there's a sort of pre-annual event uh, that, that was tied to uh, the Tennessee homecoming um, in the late 1980s. And so uh, that was really an event that brought authors back to the state to celebrate the literary life of the state. Um, and that event really resonated and developed into an annual, uh, not just Tennessee focused, uh, but really regional and over the years, national and even uh, international program of, um, of you know, renowned authors, new and upcoming authors, but uh, really, as I said earlier, a very strong program uh, with a really diverse uh, set of topics and interests and, um, and genres. So uh, it, it, again, sort of starting regionally, but, but that has, uh, uh, did quickly and has continued to expand to really be a, a truly international uh, festival. What has been your most popular author so far that you feel like people keep asking you to bring back? Well, that is really hard to say because there are, uh, you know, it's one of the things that we're thrilled by is uh, and thrilled with is the uh, 
level of excitement around, you know, just all, all kinds of authors who come, some who come repeatedly. Uh, some of the ones I mentioned earlier are festival favorites. I mean, we are always asked when Rick Bragg is uh, going to come back. You know, when will Ron Rash be here? Lee Smith. I mean, there are a number of um, authors who have been visiting the festival in repeatedly as they have new books coming out uh, that have really become festival favorites. But um, it, it would be hard to say a favorite, but there really, uh, there really is a sort of uh, cohort of authors who've come back multiple times uh, because of uh, just the sort of uh, excitement around their visits when they do have new books, um, new books coming out. Yeah. Uh, tell me what people can expect. Is there a charge for this festival? The, the festival is uh, continues to be, as it always has been, free and open to everyone. It's really important for us as programmers. That's a really important uh, part of the festival uh, character. So um, we want to have that remain free and really open to everyone. So there are no paid uh, events at the festival. It really is supported by uh, the generosity uh, and the gifts of people who do support the festival financially as, as well as with in-kind services and goods. So that lets us be able to keep that uh, event open to everyone. Um, that's a very important part of it. Uh, that remains this year. And uh, we, we, we buy for that every year that we keep that um, entire weekend free and accessible. What you'll see is uh, very much like, I mean, again, we talked about sort of wading into the festival after a year uh, online. So what you'll see are a lot of things that are familiar if you've been to the festival in past years. Um, if not, it's sort of what the sort of things you might expect to see in a festival environment. So we'll have food, we'll have music, we'll have all sorts of um, things going on outdoors, book sales uh, uh, put together by Parnassus Books. Uh, that all of those components will be there. What you'll notice if you've been in the past is that um, the footprint of the event will be scaled down a bit. So everything will be taking place on the legislative, on the uh, War Memorial Plaza. So that's right at the foot of the Capitol uh, between 6th and 7th and uh, Charlotte and Union in that area right there. We'll be sort of taking over the War Memorial Auditorium. So one of the things that we're trying to do is program events. Uh, in spaces where people will will feel comfortable coming back out, being in the public, um, as long as that can be done responsibly. So we'll be doing sessions uh, sort of for the first time outdoors. We're going to have some kind of um, uh, areas designated as festival session areas on the plaza, tinted, uh, but also sort of seated with uh, respecting a little bit of distance. And then using the War Memorial, which is, uh, you probably know, a pretty good size space and will allow us to spread people out and still get a good number of people in there. So, again, what we're looking at is how to do this responsibly and respectful of people's concerns about public health, but at the same time giving the opportunity to come back together um, and enjoy that space together over the, over the course of those two days. Yeah. Uh, what, one of the other things that's different um, this year is that uh, we, we're not really programming for uh, youth under 12. So, so that age group that's not yet able to be vaccinated, um, we're sort of holding back on programming for them specifically. So that, that sort of outdoor kids area that everybody knows and loves, uh, we're not going to be doing that this year. But we will have some YA programming. There definitely will be uh, youth programming. Uh, and even in the virtual program, we'll have some YA authors. That component, we're holding off again until next year when we hope to bring that back fully and, and really do everything um, uh, as we've historically done it. But the other things, you know, music, food, the beer garden, those things will be open, just sort of spread out. And again, everything outdoors except for the programming that we do in the War Memorial Auditorium, which we'll be doing uh, all day on Saturday and Sunday. It's a great event. I've been before. It's been a few years since I've been. You can purchase, can you still purchase books? You're going to have that available this year? 
Absolutely, yes. So Parnassus will be set up really in the middle of the event, and they are, they're the official booksellers. So proceeds from those book sales uh, go directly to benefit the festival. So uh, that's a really important part of the festival, to have those book sales available there. So every author on the program will have books available for sale there. Yes. Well, you guys go check it out. It's free. It's in October. The weather should be great. It's outside and it's in a great place. Uh, that whole little plaza area is amazing. It's great. Yeah. We, we love to see it transformed and uh, are looking forward to that festival atmosphere being, being back in downtown Nashville with the uh, event this year. You guys have a Facebook page and I was just looking at it. you keep it pretty well updated. Lo tell people where they can go find more information. And you mentioned there's going to be virtual events leading up to the festival. Yes, that's right. So the best hub, the best place to go get updated information. Uh, yes, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. But if you go to our website, humanitiestennessee.org, uh, that will get you to all of those pages as well as to the regular updates. So the list of authors uh, uh, as they're confirmed to attend. When the program is ready and available, you'll see that there. So go to humanitiestennessee.org and, and just you'll see Southern Festival Books right there on the front. Follow that and you'll, you'll be able to even sign up for uh, regular updates uh, through our newsletter and other means directly from the website. All right, hey, thanks for joining us and you guys please go check it out. We'll see you soon, bye everybody. I think it's trying to end here. <laughs>